forearm. Later in tonight, when we start to perform the submission, we're going to roll that forearm into the submission, just like that in That's why we do it. Look up to the ceiling. As your chest open, you need that wide chest to create good posture and straight spine. The epitome of efficiency and power in Jiu Jitsu is able to control your posture. Put CBC uh, pipe in your hand, flexible pipe. I'm going to grip that pipe lightly. We're going to try to bend it. When we bend it, our arms come in and our elbows especially come into our ribs. We're going to engage our shoulders, our chest, and our back, and our biceps all at the same time without squeezing real hard. You do not want to squeeze real hard. You want to let your big muscles do the work, not your small muscles. So lightly grip that PVC flexible pipe in your hand. We're going to bend the bar, elbows in. You should feel it, shoulders, back, and chest. Push your chest forward as you bring your elbows in. That should be really strong. And you're going to be flat. Thighs down. Hands to your uh, right about where your shoulders are. What we're going to do is kind of press and pull. We're going to press up. We're going to look up. And as we press, our elbows are going to come in. So we're not doing a push up. We're not coming here. Just the top part, our belt stays on the ground for our hips. So we're going to press and pull our elbows into our ribs. And then back. Press, bringing your elbows in, looking up. It should feel a little bit like yoga. See if you underneath side control. Yeah. Why? Why? I can't get out. Okay, no movement. Okay, That's tough. one reason, because you can't move. What else makes it suck really bad? Pressure, yup, and sometimes their weight. So it's a combination of things. Um, so what we're gonna do tonight, we're gonna go over side control and try to make it better for you. And we're gonna compound pressures. We're gonna introduce how to improve it step by step. So at the very last step of this, you should see a drastic amount of pressure without strength. Make sense? And then we'll work a submission in here. How about this guy? On your back. Alright, you guys can get closer if you want. So my book over there, can you get that one? Get to lose my place. Thank you. All right, no, normal generic side control. I'm gonna go across his body, I'm gonna cup his head, I'm gonna join my hands together. This is like side control first day. Yep. Here, right? Everybody seen this before? Look familiar? New to anybody? No? Okay. So side control here, I'm gonna squeeze with my arms, okay? And I'm gonna make real heavy on it. I want you to tell me how much pressure, 1 to 10, 10 being maximum pressure, you're feeling once I squeeze. Okay. Uh, let's, uh, let's five. Maybe 5, okay. Can you move anything else on your body? Uh, arm, mm -hmm. legs, arm. And hips, uh, yeah. So, I squeeze, I commit both my arms to the top here to isolate. Move your hips around for me. He's got full movement of his hips. He can start to trim a knee in. He can start to move his hands. He can start to bridge my neck. Up. Okay. So he has full movement there and very little pressure. Very little weight. Make sense? Okay. He's not hating life yet, but we'll get to that step by step. So how we're going to improve this. The first one is our posture. Remember when I said straight back is the epitome of efficiency? What is my back doing when I lock my hands? What is my spine doing right here? It's curved. Exactly. It's curved. It's round. Have you ever tried to lift heavy weights, bent over, and slouch? Why not? 
not efficient. It's very inefficient and you're gonna hurt yourself, right? You're not utilizing all the muscles you can because your posture's off. So if I'm curled over him like a, a like a, the letter C, my spine is curved, I'm not strong, and he's gonna sweep me that way with one good pull. Yeah, okay? So the first thing I wanna do in side control is get my posture up. I want to look at the trophies there because you got some really pretty trophies. Okay? So from side control, from this same position, I want to bring my chest up. Is the pressure any different? If I squeeze, if I do anything else, is the pressure any different? It shouldn't be, but my posture is much stronger. Yes? Okay. I'm going to look up here at the trophies. I'm going to bring my knees up. If you see me right now, my knees are on the floor. If my knees are on the floor, where's my weight? Say it louder. On the floor. I want my weight on him. Why not? I want him to suffer. I want him to hold my weight. That pressure is going to help me exhaust him. Put him in a vulnerable position. So when the... First thing is to get my head up, and then I'm gonna get my knees off the mat. How high do you think I need to get off my, my knees off the mat? This much. That's it. As long as they're not touching the floor, my weight is starting to come on top of him. So now, I'm gonna do the same thing, but I'm gonna lift my head up, and I'm gonna get my knees off the mat. You should feel the pressure on top of him. So we're gonna start with just weight pressure. My head's up. How's that? Yep. Feel different? Yeah. Okay. So we're up to a six maybe? Uh, yeah, yeah, six, seven. Okay, six or seven. I haven't squeezed. I haven't pressed. I haven't done anything but look up and get off my knees. So real simple, I'm not using strength anymore. Make sense? So once you get with a partner, do the same thing. Start with the original side control on your knees over and see how that feels. See how inefficient that feels. Pick your head up, look up, get your legs back and knees up. And ask the bottom person if they feel a difference in pressure. Good? Okay. Grab a point and build this up. Let's talk about the cross face for a second. Somebody said they hated the cross face um, in side control. Cross face, did I squeeze a cross face at all? No. Did I force it? No. The cross face, what is the cross face for? What is the utilization here? Wait, sorry, let me go back. Everybody know what a cross face is? Okay, great. So when I put my shoulder, oh, you, you better know. Uh. Anybody else? Everybody knows what cross face is? Yeah. So cross face here with my shoulder, what does it do for me? And that, what does that prevent him from doing? Exactly. In order for him to turn, he's got to turn his head. He wants to turn towards me, but if he can't look at me, if he can't turn his eyes towards me, he can't turn his hips towards me. So it's limiting his movement to one direction, which is that way. That's his only option if my cross face is so I don't have to ram his teeth in. I don't have to make him suffer with a cross face. I just need enough contact. Try to look at him. Okay? I'm not ruining his day. He's not going to have a sore jaw tomorrow. It's just contact on his cheek prevents him from looking at me. And that's what that is. Yeah. So how we're going to improve now, we're looking up. We're getting off our knees. But at th this time right now, he's still got movement in his hips, right? He can still move his hips. We're gonna put an end to that. First thing I'm gonna do, <clears throat> I'm gonna unlock my hands. Because I'm gonna drag my right elbow, then the bar style, to his hip bone, okay? Right on the ground, I wanna pinch that hip bone, okay? Open hand, drag the floor, and make good contact on that hip bone. What is that doing for me? Stopping him from moving. But if I don't do anything on this side, he's going to start forcing his hips in here and getting his knee in. Right? What do I do here? Bring my knee in to put it on the same spot on his hip bone on this side. So I'm creating a vice or a wedge here. So contact on both sides, he shouldn't be able to move either way. 
So he's going to start to really freak out because he can't move his hips and he can't move his head. He's only got one arm to move at that point. <clears throat> so I get off my knees, I pinch the hip, bring my knee in for contact. I'm still not squeezing anything. How's that pressure? Oh, yeah, it's good. <laughs> How would you rate that pressure? Oh, very good. Okay, seven or eight? Uh, eight, nine. Eight. Okay, he's suffering now. So we're adding just a little bit more. We're gonna open our hands to bend the bar. Chest comes up and we're dragging this back to the hip to pinch and bringing this knee to touch here while we're off our knees. So creating a vice here, off our knees and looking up. Try to move. Thank you very much. So on three, we're gonna clap and then we're gonna get a partner and we're gonna try that part. One, two, three. <laughs> when you bump both ways, you can cross face. One reason for a cross face is so he can't look at me, so he can't turn towards me. I've got a variation of cross face I use a little bit. Uh, which takes his spine offline. What the spine offline means is if his spine or neck turn from a straight line at all, his power goes down dramatically, okay? How I'm gonna do this is I can switch the cross face. I'll steal my knees so he doesn't have to suffer. From this one, I'll come to the other side and as I draw this one back into the hip, I'll take his head offline. How's that fresh? Okay. What that does is if this is the straight line down his body, my elbow is pulling his head to the side, forcing him in this direction. He really doesn't like the position and he will fight just to get his neck straight. So I'm gonna be one move ahead because he's gotta straighten his neck before he does anything. Does that make sense? So that's all an option for the cross. All right, last part of this, which goes to the question over here. I also like to take the head off line and keep the cross face. I like to do things that I can do in gi and no gi. Same move all the time. Makes my game real easy for me. I want to come under his armpit. The hand under the arm comes under his armpit and I can cut. If I want to grab the gi, I'll grab the gi but all I need is a cup under the armpit and I'll drag it back. What's that do to my cross face? It brings my shoulder this way. It turns his head. It's not just a soft cross face. It becomes, watch his face and chin. How's that pressure? Yeah. Okay. So if you can cup under the armpit and drag it forward, your shoulder automatically comes forward and presses his face in one direction. If he's looking that way, he can only go that way. But with my body on him here, there's no way for him to turn at all. So I take the ability of him turning towards me away 100%, and I take his ability to turn that way away probably 95% because of what else I'm doing. So I'm compounding the trouble for him. So I'm gonna switch my cross face to under the armpit, and I'm gonna drag it back, like the bend a bar exercise we did this way. And with my feet, <clears throat> there we go, off my knees. And with my feet, I'm gonna drop my chest instead of being on top of him like a table. I can be heavy or I can be really a lot of pressure. I'm gonna take my chest from here on top. I'm gonna drop it right to the side of his ribs here just where it crests, right here. Then my feet are gonna push forward. So my whole body is gonna put pressure here. Now I'm gonna put all this together and then you rate it out of 10. So I'm looking up, up under the armpit, bring both elbows out off my knees, come back. I haven't done a submission yet. It's posture and movement. 
I'm not using strength. I'm not squeezing anything. I'm not even using a grip that closes here. I'm using the smart efficiency to get a better position and control. And he's ready to tap. So I don't have to do anything else. I guess class is over. <laughs> okay? So switch to under the armpit. Drag them both at the same time. And then with your toes, bring your chest right there on the ribs just as soon as it crests. And then drive forward on the balls of your feet. That's going to create that compounded pressure in so many ways. He's ready to tap. On three. One, two, three. I want to attack this arm. Right? If all my pressure is to keep him here, it's kind of tough to manipulate and submit this arm without taking my pressure off. That one's already isolated, so why not attack it? Both my arms are in that direction, and I don't have to take my pressure off to attack that arm. That makes sense? Okay. <clears throat> so, what I'm looking for on this side, as I generate pressure, is I want his elbow to come away from his body. Anybody know why? It's weaker. It's weaker. It's very much weaker. The higher the elbow comes away from the body, okay, this is his strongest position for his arm. Elbows close to the body. You can curl, generate the biceps, and it's nice and tight. I can't get much in there. That contact with the body for him is super strong. I need to separate that. And I can do that from the pressure. He'll, he'll react from the pressure I generate, right? Because you don't really want to tap the side control pressure. Yeah. So I'm looking at this elbow. As soon as I can get underneath that elbow, the rolling forearm, the blade of that forearm, my submission is set up. Okay? That's all I need. That right there. You see that I cup under the elbow? Right there. So if I can scoop, I'm ready. Okay? I scoop and I release this hand because I'm going that way. I'm going to come across his body as I'm my side control, I scoop this and I take it with me across. I'm pinning him with my chest, and my head's on the ground, and my hips are up. So my hips are higher than my head. How's your arm feel? Why not? Yeah, and try to move it. Okay, what are my attacks here? Anybody? From right in that position before I move anything, what's the first one? Straight arm, straight arm, Americana. No, his arm bent. Americana. Just like that, yeah. Americana is the first one. So if I end up here with his arm in, there's my Americana. If he's a super fighter and he straightens that arm, all I do is switch my grip, there's a straight arm. That's my submission from side control. And all I have to do is get under the point of that elbow. I don't have to commit my whole arm to an underhook to fight all this. I don't have to do anything with this hand. I just need to pin it. Bring my hand up if it straightens. Straight on board. This one where you cut the bicep? This one? This one. I'm sorry. I'm right behind the elbow. Okay? Because that's where I scoop it, that's where it stays all the way down. So it should be in the same spot for me. Okay? So all my weight is on that arm. My 212 pounds on that arm. My feet are driving forward into that arm. He's not moving that arm. Questions? So we're going to be in a side control. We're going to look for that elbow and we're going to scoop it with the blade right behind the elbow, the bone. The bony, sticky outy part right there. Okay? Scoop it to your chest. Come across and dive on it. And there's your two submissions. Americana straight arm bar. I still have same position. I still have pressure on it. And he has very, very little defense to counter either one of those. Because my 
body weight is on top of them too. On three. One, two, three. It's still on the mat. Um, no, you have to bring your head up a little bit to get that hand under. So I'll scoop, I'll dive. My head's on the ground as long as I'm diving, but I can't get my hand in there. So I pick my hand up like I brought my knees up just enough to get the hand in, which isn't a lot. There you go. Okay. Bonus. So we dive. Sorry, these things keep on. We dive, he's isolated. He doesn't want to get a Americana. He does straight arm bar, or makes straight arm. I can't finish it for whatever reason. That's for you. <laughs> same position, same pressure, same isolation, but let's say I slipped above the elbow and I can't finish that arm bar. You always have the wrist lock finish. So there's your bonus. Good. He deserves a medal for tonight. He survived. Purple heart. Yay, bro. And you can train longer and without injury because you're not muscling people and you're not forcing them. Nothing we did here should have felt real forced. It's compounded pressure because we understand what we're doing with the body. We're isolating, we're utilizing big muscle groups, bend the bar. Um, even the submission shouldn't have felt forced. It should have felt real easy for the guy on the top. Because you're in a great position and they can't move right in front of you. Good? So we roll? Yes? What is the difference between the side control and you do the, Mari the Americana and then the side? Yeah, it's like which one is better because usually we do the Americana on the side control. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Why do we have to lose? Um, for the Americana, where is it? <laughs> <laughs> He's hiding. Yeah, I was hiding. Hiding. Sorry. Sorry. hiding. That's a good question. <laughs> I'm trying to do this as light as possible. Mm -hmm. We've done enough. So why do I look this way? Is that your question? Why do we have to dive in? Which is we can do the Americanos on the side as well. Because my pressure, the pressure transfers from here to here. It isolates this arm in a way that if I try to do it back here, he can keep this arm strong and he can fight. Okay? But if my weight's on top of it and it's pinned. He, he can't do anything with that. Good question. Awesome. Yes. Is there any concern for like scooping if, if he's able to move in this case his right arm, scooping up under your leg and using some type of leverage to, to bridge and scoop? Yeah. <laughs> I'm sure my is. So from from where? So after you dive over. Oh, and then so you're there. And if I have this arm free, it's circle. Come on. <laughs> okay, that's just so just moving through those alternates. Uh, okay. Sorry, go back. Yep. I don't need to hear for this. So his question is: When I dive, if, am I worried about him scooping my leg? My answer is no, because I have all my options in front of me. He's got to do a lot of work to get that arm back away from both of mine. If I didn't have that, if that hand came under, if I missed the scoop when I dove, and I went without it, then I had the problems. But as long as I have that in front of me, I'm not too worried. He can't come this way, because my knee's there. He can't go that way, because my weight's on him. So he can try to bench press if he wants, or bridge, but the arm, I've got control of the arm in front of me. I didn't know if, maybe if, if there's something I should have been doing with my left knee in this case to like control that right arm. Yeah, you can win the inside arm, absolutely. Um, but it doesn't affect the pressure. On the other side. It can set up other submissions, but the pressure doesn't change. Got it. What else, folks? Anything else? We roll, get a partner, mouth guard, water, whatever you need. One, two, three.